What's up and welcome to the HVAC Dope Show. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything air conditioning in 2024 and everything you need to know to make the best HVAC purchase for your home this year. And if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. It's a great way that you can show support for the channel if you find this content helpful and make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm. And in this video, we're gonna start off by talking about the three types of air conditioners that are available on the market today in 2024. We're gonna talk about a lot of things related to other types of HVAC, like heat pumps and things of that nature. And we've made a few videos about those recently. So I'll make sure to link those videos at the end. If you are more interested in a heat pump or you have questions about air handlers and furnaces, again, we'll have a video about that linked at the end of this video, because in this video, we're really gonna be focusing on air conditioners and what's on the market today. Now, the three types of air conditioners can be broken down into single stage, multi-stage and inverter type of systems. Now, the difference between them is kind of what you could have guessed, a single stage system is basically either on or off. It only has one stage of cooling. A multi-stage or a two-stage system has multiple stages of cooling. And then an inverter system ramps up and down similar to how a car operates. And what I mean by that is a car can either go zero to 60, whereas a single stage air conditioner would be like if a car went zero miles an hour or 60 miles an hour. Obviously, that'd be a pretty uncomfortable ride, but inverters actually ramp up and down and they modulate. So they could run at 2% capacity, they could run at 24% capacity, they could run at 100% capacity on those hottest days or at peak demand when they're really trying to get the temperature down in the home. Let's say, for example, you come home and it's 75 degrees and you're trying to cool it down to 70. The difference between an inverter and a two-stage or a single-stage system is that when an inverter kicks on, because it knows that there's a five-degree temperature difference, which is a pretty big difference, it's going to start to ramp up and get up to 100% capacity relatively quickly to start to cool things down. And then as it starts to get closer to that set point, it will actually modulate itself down to a lower capacity. And as a result with inverters, you get longer run times. Now, a single stage system is a great system for people that are looking for basic reliable cooling. This is going to be technology that's either, it's basically what you're used to using. If you have an old system that's either 20 years or older, it's probably a single stage air conditioner. These are great options for people that either have have a small space, don't have very high bills, or they just don't use their air conditioner that much. We have a lot of customers in Colorado. I don't know how they do it, but they might be comfortable with their home at 80 degrees and then they open the windows at night and they only run the air conditioner on the very hottest days. However, if you're someone that lives in a very humid climate like Texas, or perhaps you live in Georgia, it is very hot, very humid, very sticky. So you run your air conditioner, you know, nine months out of the year in a lot of those places just because of the humidity removal. So in climates like that, I would recommend getting the most efficient HVAC that you possibly can because you're definitely going to make your money back in terms of the savings between going for an inverter system versus a basic traditional single stage system. Now, that being said, single stage systems are great options for rentals, especially because renters, they don't really take care of the equipment. So if they don't do a good job changing the filter and things like that, and it burns out prematurely, they tend to be a little bit more reliable versus an inverter system that might have more components that can break on it if it's not well maintained and taken care of. But really, these things are designed to be used and abused and ran. But we just don't typically recommend putting in higher equipment on a rental just because you're not going to be the one that's paying the bill. And so there's not really an added benefit for you. And your tenant honestly isn't going to know the difference. And it's not going to be much of an added benefit for them. They're going to care more about things like countertops, obviously. So just to recap, the three systems that are out there are single stage systems, two stage or multi stage systems or inverters, two stage or multi stage systems are kind of a hybrid, a jump up from a single stage, but not quite as good of a system as an inverter. However, a lot of the two-stage products or multi-stage products out there are pretty neck and neck in terms of the pricing that we see when compared to an inverter system. So a lot of times that's why when we give people options, we're typically giving them a single stage AC option or a higher efficiency inverter option like the Dyke and Fit because these options are basically, if someone's gonna spend the money on a two-stage system or a multi-stage system, a lot of times it makes sense to make the jump and just go to an inverter product. Now in this video, we're also gonna talk about brand because it's one of the most common questions we get asked is, hey, what brand should we use? And I'll make sure to link another video at the end that talks about the truth about brand because in our 
opinion. I hate to say it, but brand doesn't really matter that much. What matters more is who installs it. And if you ask any contractor, they will tell you this. And the reason is, is because the truth is nowadays, if you take any single stage air conditioner on the market and you pull it apart, the compressor is actually not going to be made by Train or Daikin or any of the companies that you might have heard of, like Goodman, for example. It's going to be made by Ingersoll Rand. It's going to be a Copeland scroll compressor. Now, that Copeland scroll compressor is going to be the same compressor across the board for the different manufacturers that are out there on single stage systems. Where some of the technology starts to change across the brands is going to be the higher end equipment. So each of the inverter product lines are going to have their own proprietary technology. But if you're just buying a basic HVAC system, meaning like a single stage product, brand doesn't matter as much. And the reason that we sell Daikin and we're a dealer for Daikin and we like them, we also sell Mitsubishi and carry mainly because of the IntelliHeat product because I absolutely love the IntelliHeat for people that aren't quite ready to switch out their furnace or they might have just gotten a furnace and so they still want to add heat pump capabilities. The Mitsubishi IntelliHeat does that but, but the bottom line is that the reason we sell Daikin is Daikin has a 12 year parts warranty which is the best in the industry. A lot of the other manufacturers have started increasing some of their warranties to be more competitive in that space but because Daikin has that industry best warranty they also have a compressor guarantee on the higher end system that goes either six years or 12 years, which means that if the compressor goes bad, they don't just give you a new compressor, they actually give you a brand new unit. And we've used this a few times when we've had, you know, a unit that failed prematurely. And it, for us as an installer, it just puts a good feeling in us knowing that we're supported by a company. Hey, this stuff is manufactured in bulk. You know, if you install a thousand ACs in a year, sure, one or two of them might be bad and might just have a compressor bad out of the box. And if we happen to be... <laughs> the company get, that gets stuck with that, then we like the fact that we can just go in and rip it out, call it a lemon and replace it with a brand new unit. So Daikin is very good about honoring their warranty. Their warranty process is very easy for us as a dealer too. They don't make us jump through a lot of hoops. And so when we talk about brand, what we tell people to look for is look for the big name brands out there. Because although obviously I would tell you to buy Daikin, if you talk to any contractor, they're going to tell you to buy whatever it is that they're, they're selling. And that's the truth. But any of the names, like some contractors like Train, some contractors like Goodman, some like Carrier and Bryant. The bottom line is that if you have a brand that you have had in your house, you know, for 20 years and it's worked perfectly, a lot of times customers will want to replace it with that exact same brand. But the truth is the bottom line is as long as it's a reputable name brand that's well known where you're going to be able to get parts, you're going to be able to get things covered under warranty, then that's really what matters at the end of the day when it comes to brand. Now, if you're interested in a heat pump, we do have another video that we just put out talking about heat pumps and all the different heat pump technology that's come out in 2024 and what's available on the market. So if you want to watch that video, you can. But just so you know, heat pumps are not new technology. All a heat pump is, is it's just an air conditioner that has an added component called a reversing valve. And that reversing valve reverses the flow of refrigerant at making it either an air conditioner or a heater. But the bottom line is a heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. So it's not a new technology at all. Although there is newer technology or new newer types of heat pumps coming to the market in 2024. But I talk about that in another video, so more on that later. Now let's talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and some of the appliance credits that are out there. Now, the recent legislation that came out with the Inflation Reduction Act allows people to take up to a 30% tax credit on these. However, it's capped annually at about, at what you can take up to, I believe, $600 annually for air conditioning, $600 for furnaces, and the largest tax credit is $2,000 on heat pumps. And again, that's an annual tax credit. The exception to this is geothermal, there is no cap on the annual limit that you can take. So if you do do a geothermal application, but again, that's a different type of heat pump, different type that's not really related to this video, but I did want to talk about some of the other technologies that are out there and what tax credits are available. Because the truth is, is that the bigger credits, in my opinion, that you're going to see because $600 in terms of a federal tax credit is kind of measly by comparison with some of the rebates that you can get in your city. Because for example, if you look at Phoenix, SRP is a territory that we cover that's a utility in Phoenix and their rebates go up to $225 per ton of air conditioning installed. There's no cap on the number of systems. So if you have a five ton system, you're talking about a rebate.
rebate that is almost $1,000, and that's just directly from your local utility. And the reason the utilities incentivize you to put in the higher efficiency equipment is because it's actually easier on the grid. For example, inverter products pull a lot less power on startup, and so this just reduces problems because if you have a high demand like you do on peak days in the summer, if you've heard about rolling brownouts and or blackouts that happen, brownout is when the grid is shut down on purpose to prevent a blackout. Blackouts happen when like a transformer blows or something and the entire grid is out in a certain area in a block. Um, and that happens less and less as people put in higher efficiency technology because the demand in a certain region will actually go down if people have more inverter heat pumps or more inverter air conditioners because they put a lot less power on startup. There's a video that we just put out this past year about the Daikin Fit and we showed you this in action and you could see in that video that the Daikin Fit pulls about 1.5 amps when it first kicks on, which is a fraction. It's about 10% of what a traditional single stage system would pull by comparison because it's a very small amount of power. And so as a result, this is going to be better for the grid and it's just, it's easier on the equipment too. And the last thing I want to touch on, I've actually already touched on briefly, and that's the combination of the indoor unit and the outdoor unit and whether or not you want to replace them both at the same time. So I'm going to touch on that now, but before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and make sure you smash that like button. It's a huge support and helps us out a lot with the algorithm and is much appreciated. When it comes to replacing your air conditioner, everyone just thinks of the box outside, right? Your condenser, but the indoor units that make up the indoor portion of your air conditioning are the evaporator coil as well as the air handler, which is sometimes a furnace and sometimes it's just an air handler that has a coil built in. And we always recommend, well, we don't always recommend this, but I would say we often recommend pairing them with a system part of this. And we often recommend replacing them both at the same time. Number one deciding factor is going to be the age, because if the indoor unit, let's say you have a furnace inside and then your evaporator coil almost always has to be replaced when you're replacing the condenser. There are some exceptions, but nine times out of 10, you're going to be replacing the coil because it's kind of a waste if you spend all that money on an outdoor unit and then the coil inside starts leaking six months or a year later and leaks out all your refrigerant and incurs a warranty that's expensive because you're, you're double paying for some labor versus just replacing it all at once. So most of the time you're going to always replace the evaporator coil. We rarely just do condenser only swaps. But if you just replaced your furnace, you don't have to replace it just to get it to pair. But what you want to keep in mind is that a lot of the high efficiency equipment, for example, like the Daikin Fit or any of carriers equipment on the higher end, anything that's communicating technology is oftentimes going to require that you replace it with a paired matching air handler and condenser and evaporator coil so that everything communicates properly. If you're just replacing your system with a single stage option, this isn't as big of a deal because it's still going to interface with legacy 24 volt wiring versus communicating wiring. And so it's a much more straightforward swap process. So that's the first thing we consider is what is the age of that furnace? Now, if you have an old furnace, we always recommend replace, and old is gonna vary by region, but typically anything 15 to 20 years old is due for replacement. And the reason we recommend this is two reasons. Number one is, in order to qualify for a lot of rebates, oftentimes there has to be an AHRI matchup between the indoor unit and the outdoor unit. So that's number one. And number two, it's going to make for a much cleaner installation. And in addition, you now have brand new equipment. So there's nothing more annoying than getting a brand new condenser and then the blower motor goes out a month later or six months later because you have a new system and you just kind of replaced parts of it. So if it's an old system and it's due for replacement, you should just replace it all at the same time. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now, so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we'll catch you on the next episode.